mother must adapt to fill its growing needs. The placenta is the fetus's life source, supplying nutrients from the mother's blood. The mother's heart must work extra hard to pump the increased volume of blood through her system, so anything she does to keep her heart healthy will keep her fetus healthy too. Walking is good exercise, keeping the supply of blood to the placenta rich and plentiful. Eating right throughout pregnancy is also essential for mother and child's well-being. The fetus depends on mother's diet to supply the raw materials for healthy growth. And for her own health, the mother can't afford to skimp on vitamins and minerals. When it comes to nutrition, rule number one is what's good for the mother is good for her developing child. And what the mother eats, her fetus eats. The requirements of the body increase as far as calories are concerned about 300 extra calories a day, 300 to 500 extra calories a day, um, all throughout pregnancy. If you have a more healthy, balanced diet and intake, there's decreased problems in development. What harms the mother doubly harms the fragile fetus. Tobacco is extremely dangerous to both mother and fetus. It can affect the mother's cardiovascular system in the, the blood vessels and how efficiently the heart is pumping. But it actually affects the fetus as well and causes a lot of low birth weight babies. A pregnant mother never drinks alone. She shares any alcohol she consumes with her fetus. When consumed in excess, especially during the early crucial stages, alcohol can stunt the fetal development. The placenta is like a fine mesh fabric. Virtually any chemical can pass through if it's small enough. When the mother smokes and drinks, nicotine, carbon monoxide, and alcohol glide through the placental barrier to taint the fetal bloodstream, slowing the development of the fetus's brain, eyes, and respiratory system. Mothering begins long before birth as the mother-to-be creates a healthy environment. At the beginning I was really happy and then I went through a period where I was scared and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. And, but um, then I realized that, you know, I'm, I am doing it, so you can't be scared, you just gotta, I've read a lot about it, researched and stuff like that, so it kinda put me at ease. At the end of the third month of pregnancy, the mother's body finally begins to reflect the remarkable changes inside. A little more than 16 weeks into her pregnancy, Minnie is anxious to learn if her baby will be a boy or a girl. Sex is determined at the moment of conception, but it takes nearly 20 weeks before it can be recognized. I am guessing that it's going to be a boy. I just have a feeling, but for my daughter's sake, and I love her dearly, I hope it's a girl. It's just like a gut feeling, a big gut feeling. <laughs> this tiny fetus, nestled deep inside mom's womb, continues its transformation. It's just three and a half inches long, but there's no mistaking that it's human. The tiny face of this fetus looks as if in deep slumber. The arms are long enough to grasp each other and the legs are outstretched. The skin has become less transparent with only blood vessels visible and the fetus finally reveals its gender. Here we can actually see as the baby allows us to, as we move- Minnie and her family baby, have looked forward to this day for nearly 20 weeks. Picture. Today, they'll learn the sex of their baby. With the head at this end, and the chest and the heart, moving towards the feet, and then eventually we get to the thigh bone. Months of anticipation are about to end. Let's take a look here, and this one's fairly obvious. So do we want to know what the sex is? Yes. yes. Okay. 
The male and female sexual organs start identically as a small nub between the fetus's legs. Two small bumps, one on either side of the nub, soon emerge. If this fetus is a boy, the nub becomes a penis. The two bumps grow together to form a scrotum. The boy's developing testicles are still deep inside his body. Within them, primitive sperm are already developing. If this fetus is a girl, the nub becomes a clitoris. A vagina forms from the same tissue that forms a urethra in both sexes. Inside her tiny ovaries, all the eggs she will have for her entire lifetime are already forming. I want you to focus in between the legs. <laughs> well, what do you think? What do we think? A boy. That's right. Yes. That's right. It. Oh! oh there's the picture goodness. right there. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> So we got our answer. You have a baby brother. What do you think about that? The only growth spurts that I felt was last month where I was small and all of a sudden I gained, like in a week I gained six pounds and it just pushed right out. It was just really weird. What happens is the top half of the uterus um, expands and as it expands or as it stretches and grows, it actually pushes all the organs that used to accompany, used to occupy that space, it pushes them up to up higher and higher into your um, upper abdomen. By the 24th week, virtually all the mother's organs have been rearranged to make room for a new living being. But rather than discomfort, Nancy feels euphoric about the child inside her and the astounding changes of her own body. You kind of feel sexy. You just, it's a different feeling. It's a different feeling. And I don't think anyone understands. Either you feel good and you feel sexy and you kind of just, I guess, walk the talk. I don't know. <laughs> just a fabulous feeling. The epic journey of the fetus continues. A growth spurt last month added almost four inches and two pounds. Now at more than a foot long and two and a half pounds, the fetus seems eager to explore its cozy womb. As if reacting to private thoughts, expressions wash over the face. The fingers and toes are fully formed now, complete with nails and fingerprints. And the entire fetus wears a furry coating. The hair, called lanugo, follows the patterns of the connective tissue, covering the fetus in swirls and spirals of down. The skin bears a waxy coating called vernix caseosa. It protects the fragile fetal skin from the amniotic fluid and infection and will aid the fetus during the dramatic squeeze through the birth canal. Nancy is learning to cope with her new lack of grace the size and weight of her belly requires new ways to perform her daily routine. I was easy when I bent down, I could keep my balance. I'm not keeping that balance anymore. The stomach's a little heavier, so I'm not sure which way I'm gonna go. Nancy isn't alone in her struggle for comfort. For the first time, she can feel with excitement her baby-to-be growing restless. As the life inside her starts to fidget and kick, Nancy's body responds. As Nancy's body prepares for labor, her uterus practices Braxton Hicks contractions, named for the doctor who first observed them. These irregular contractions are not as intense as those of true labor, but to Nancy, each breathless pang feels like the flutter of butterflies. 
Braxton Hicks contractions are 